Last week, 16-year-old Heaven Fitch became the first female fighter to win a state champ wrestling championship in North Carolina. She absolutely smashed the boys. And as somebody who was raised on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I could not be happier. But why is it that girls still aren't encouraged to pursue physical strength and ability as much as boys? I mean, seriously. The power imbalance that's existed between men and women forever historically stemmed from a difference in strength. And we're choosing to add to that. Come on. But let me be blunt. If you tell your little boy to be strong, but not your little girl, you're saying to your children, I only want one of you to be able to defend yourself in future. As far as I'm concerned, that's child neglect. Accepting the fantastic example that we've just seen on screen, and of course uh, noting that and commending it, do you not accept that the average man is going to probably be, not emotionally necessarily, but physically stronger than the average one? You don't accept that? I, accept, I accept that basic okay, premise. Cool. Now, do you therefore accept that while everything should be done, and if young girls want to become body lifters, weight lifters, whatever it might be, that is fantastic. We, we must be, just allow for what nature has rightly or wrongly created. I don't know why you're shaking your head. I'll come to you in a moment. Because it's not true. You think the average woman is stronger than the... I, I mean, I don't know what an average means, but you, you honestly think that. For a long time, people thought uh, in sport that there was a difference in muscle comp composition between men and women. What we're looking for is this quick twitch, fast twitch muscle, which um, explains elite performance in things where you need spurts of strength. So weightlifting, boxing, explosive energy. Uh, a study last year found that that is no, it's not true. They looked at the muscle composition of elite female weightlifters, and they found that there was no difference. Uh, they had exactly the same uh, proportion of fast twitch muscle, in some cases higher never mind fast than the men. Muscle. Let's just so bring what we're, so what are you we're telling finding, me there's a woman could beat Tyson Fury? So what we're finding is that the I science is just catching up with the idea that there actually is no reason. Well, actually, let's in terms of gender why uh, there should be a difference in strength. It's how you're trained, and it's also what you're taught to think about your own capabilities. Oh, well, let's, let's have a look at a proper match. Let's get ready to rumble! Please welcome today's contestants to the ultimate battle of the sexes. In the red corner, it's the thunder from the Humber, Michelle Mighty Dubry! And in the pink corner, it's the Hefe from the FA, Greg the Giant Dyke! <laughs> now, I want a good clean fight between the two of you. Get in your positions. Three, two, one, fight! Greg's looking calm. Greg's looking calm. Michelle straining. <laughs> oh, Greg's starting to wobble. Oh. <laughs> and the thunder from the Humber takes it. Regardless of whether or not um, there's a physiological difference in women, men and women. The fact is, even if we were to accept that, that men are always going to, on average, be slightly Thank stronger, you. even if we accept Thank that, you. why are we telling our boys to pursue physical strength I'm more than our girls? No, I'm with the you best way to address that, yeah. in theory, actually, logically, would be to I'm tell girls you. more than boys to pursue physical strength in order to yeah. fix that imbalance. Oh, I get that. Yeah. I get that. Well, you're obviously one hull of an arm wrestler, Michelle. Congratulations to you. I've got to be honest, I had a right sweat on. I was really trying as well on that. Uh, Greg, I think Greg let me win. There's a part of me that actually thinks that. Um, but what well, I you'd have been say... terribly upset if you'd lost, wouldn't you? Of course I would have. Yeah, exactly. Never been Imagine just... getting back to Hull, so... having lost to you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yes, an, old, an old southerner. <laughs> to lose do you think, I don't know who southern. the top tennis stars are. Do you think Maria Sharapova could beat Rafael Nadal or whatever? No, I think that, no. you know, and I base this on no science whatsoever, but I do think that on the average, an average man would be stronger than your yes. average woman. But I don't understand this obsession with trying to make men and women the same. I think that actually, 
really. You know, it's not about, for me, when I, if I had a girl or a boy, I would want those uh, children to be as physically, like I went to karate from being five years of age, my whole childhood, I did. Um, and I would want my child to be able to self-defend. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really important yeah. whether you're a girl or a boy. And if my child was into sports, I would want to encourage that as much as possible, irrespective of their gender. So I think as a parent, if you put your own kid into your girl, so go sit there and play with a doll, you're a boy, go do weightlifting, then I think that's you being silly as a parent. Yeah. And, 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 re and research shown done by women in sports shows that 76% of boys felt that they were encouraged by their parents to pursue physical strength whereas just 67% of girls felt the same. You are creating an imbalance, well, you're worsening an imbalance in society, and it's just not good. There's a stat from women in sport that did says... Did you let me win, Greg? D did I let well, you win? Did you? I just in Oh, I, no, I didn't. Thank you. I didn't. I would, I would Can you take your lie detector? <laughs> yes, because I didn't want to go up to Hull and get a lot of flack from people. So I thought, no, not? no, I did, didn't let you in. Why is my... Anyway, you were about to say something sensible. I was going to say something quite profound, but I forgot <laughs> that now. <laughs> it was just said that 28% of girls aged 14 to 16 enjoy playing sport, where boys, the figure's much greater than that. And I, I, I don't think that is... Natural. I don't think it's. Right. I just think it's about the socialisation of what happens. I think you're right about the socialisation. So we're, even when we look at um, people who are at the top of their game, so Andrea Petkovic, who's a German tennis player, she's ranked 82 in the world. She says about um, muscles, developing muscles. She says, I just feel unfeminine. I feel like there are millions of people who watch me on TV who think I look like a bodybuilder because of my muscular physique. I would love to be a confident player that is proud of her body, but as a woman, we are judged more. Our physicality is judged more, and it makes us self-conscious. So even someone at the top of their game mm. thinks that, and I think there is a lot of socialization around that, so women feel like developing muscle and being strong is in some way unfeminine. I think that is a socialization. And it's, and it's because of the fact that we, we, we separate the ideas of what a boy should pursue and what a girl mm. should pursue right from an early age. Therefore, a, we put the boys in, in these more rough and tumble sports so that boys grow up thinking that the way they should judge people is, that, is on their ability oh. to survive in those sorts of games, i.e. judging people based on their physical strength. And, th and that will, um, well, right now, disproportionately dis disadvantage women. Well, I think it's even more simple and then that and you won't agree with what I'm about to say but I think in society women are conditioned to what is socially acceptable based on what is attractive to men that's yeah. what I think so I think as a woman you have this image and I know you probably won't agree but as a as a woman there are your pushed images about what is sexy mm -hmm. and attractive yep. and feminine. feminine and it is all based on what men perceive Whoa. to be attractive well, no. and Daniel and Craig think... coming out of the water in his swimming trunks it's not the same I didn't Come say it was the same. I'm talking about girls, and we're talking no, no, about no, that body but we're, we're talking about strength, and that is... I, 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 I'm, not sure, I'm not sure it would apply to you coming out of the... No, I'm joking. Joking. But, for a second. But let's no, not forget, there is... There is <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> sit on the roller skates. So yeah. the media plays a massive role in what we find sexy. Uh, so um, what was what was considered to be attractive a hundred years ago would be a, a much more a much more fuller woman. Yeah. Whereas whereas right now, whereas right yeah. now thanks to especially magazines and fashion a a, a, a thinner woman. And then we, now we've moved in the J Lo direction but, um, with with more curves. But, but, it changes based on what the media the, tells we've us. We've gone from Cary Grant to Daniel Craig. It's the same for both sexes. But the fact is, if we if we were to encourage women to pursue, um, to pursue sport, if that was if a more muscular woman was was portrayed in in, in the media and films as the attractive female in those storylines, it would change the perception of, as to what we perceive as sexy. But remember, you're coming from a culture. I mean, where the, the Football Association, for instance, mm. banned women's football for 50 mm. years because yeah. they thought it wasn't it wasn't ladylike. And you think now, you look at what's happened in recent years where there are some very good people working in women's football who have managed to get hold of quite a lot of money out of the mm. FA, and actually the growth in women's football is enormous mm. compared to the growth in men's football at the moment. And, and it's, so it's about culture. Okay. Oh, just to, to be blunt, I just want a world where the, in the mind of every single creep out there, the thought, that girl might kick my ass, is bedded in, into their head. So, and thanks to the ongoing saga of Brexit, you would be forgiven for thinking that politics is, well, boring. 
but it seemed like hope was on the horizon in the form of the race to be the next Labour leader. After all, who could forget the 2010 contest, the ultimate sibling scandal when David Miliband's dear brother Ed stole the job from right under his nose? Or the shock victory in 2015 when, oh, Jeremy Corbyn took the reins after a fiercely fought fight between the left and the lefter than the left. But the contest in 2020 looks set to go down in history as the dullest one ever. Whether it's Long Bailey, Nandy or Sir Starmer who end up as the honourable leader of the opposition, it's safe to say that this contest hasn't provided the light-hearted relief we were all hoping for. Until now. Step four, the often overlooked deputy leadership race. Take a look at, doc at candidate Dr. Rosina Eileen Khan's unique way of topping off a closing statement. You've still, you've still got another 25 seconds. <laughs> if I could turn back time. If I could find a way, I'd take back all the words that have hurt you, and you'd say. <laughs> For single handedly managing to save us from certain boredom, Dr. Rosina, you are our parliamentary pop star of the week. <laughs> That's all we've got time for this week, but if you want to join in the debate, just search for us on Twitter or check out the Sky News Facebook page. And if you want to listen on the go, you can find the Pledge podcast on Apple, Google, or Spotify. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.